Okay, today's video is going to be an eyeshadow palette declutter. I'm actually really excited about this. I'm hoping it's going to be a little bit more of a cutthroat declutter because it's just, it's needed to be honest with you. I don't use every single palette in here and I just wanna make sure that my palette collection consists of products that I use regularly. If you guys are new to my channel, I used to have an eyeshadow palette obsession. I do not use that word lightly. I honestly just bought so many palettes. I wanted to try every single launch, review it on my channel, and my favorite part of my my makeup routine was like sitting down and doing my eyeshadow and this year I haven't actually even purchased a palette with the exception of like a few quads in the beginning of the year when the drugstore brands launched new formulas so it's been really nice not to actually purchase a new palette and just be able to use what I have and rotate through my collection I'm going to be a little bit more harsh with this declutter if I've recommended a palette in the past and I declutter it it doesn't mean it's a bad palette and I'm going back on my recommendation it just means it's something that I no longer use as often or it's not something I want to hold on to. Everything that's being decluttered is going to go to a new home. Like I have a lot of friends that love makeup, sisters, cousins, my mom. So nothing is getting thrown in the trash unless it is like a very old or expired palette, which shouldn't really happen because I do this every year. Even still, I don't plan on just like purchasing a bunch of palettes to fill up my collection again. Those days are behind me. I will probably try a new palette eventually at some point, but it will be more intentional and it won't just be because I want to try like every single new launch. So anyway, I, I know this is a lot of palettes. It's more than any one person needs, but... I feel like I've kind of changed up my buying habits and it's still in my mind important to declutter rather than just keeping everything. If I'm not using it, it has to go to a new home. So let's jump into it. Let's start decluttering. The only thing that I don't have in here are like all of my small drugstore quads or mini palettes, which I might bring in in the end, just depending on how long this video is. I feel like a good place to start would be with some of my ColourPop palettes. So let's go through the nine pan palettes. This one is Costa Coral. I'm not sure which ColourPop palettes are still available, which ones were limited edition because ColourPop does discontinue their products fairly regularly. I love this one, but it's just not something I've reached for in a little while. And I know that I have similar colors in other palettes I'm going to end up keeping. So I'm going to pass this one along. I am going to keep this one. This is one of my favorite ColourPop palettes. I think it is so gorgeous. It comes with a bunch of beautiful, like like pinky purple tones. I'm also going to keep these two. I actually just did a video, what was it called? It was like, if I lost all of my makeup and I was starting over, what would I buy first? And I mentioned these two. So this one is Nude Mood. It just comes with some of my favorite staple everyday eyeshadows. And then also That's Taupe, which is a little bit of like a cooler toned neutral version. This one is called Fine Feathered. It comes with some really beautiful, more vibrant pink tones. It's really gorgeous, but I can't remember the last time I used it and I know there are other pink toned palettes I'm going to keep so I am going to declutter this one. I really love the blush crush palette again one of my favorite just like everyday lighter pinky nude palettes. I haven't worn this one in a while as well and I feel like I really do need to be more cutthroat in this declutter so as much as I love this one I think it is time for it to go unfortunately. This is the Star Wars Mandalorian the Child palette. I actually think this is one of their best palettes. I'm not necessarily like the biggest Star Wars fan I just I haven't really ever gotten into it but I do think their Star Wars palettes usually are really really good quality. It's almost like they put like extra good ingredients in them and the shadows are like extra smooth and buttery. So I'm going to king I'm going to keep this one, but I think I'm going to declutter this one. I remember purchasing this one from Ulta and I think it might be available on ColourPop's website. It's so pretty. I don't want to get rid of all of my colorful palettes, but again, I just don't know the last time I reached for this one. So I'm going to pass this one along. This is the ColourPop Island Vacay palette. I think this was part of a holiday collection, so I'm not sure if it's still available, but I've been using this one a lot lately. It's just like an easy, everyday, staple, neutral palette. So I am going to keep this one. This one is the Baby Got Peach palette, which is so much fun. Remember when ColourPop would launch like a new monochromatic palette and everyone was so excited? I feel like that is the time in makeup I really miss, but this one comes with some beautiful peachy tones, perfect for summer. I think I'll hang on to this one. And then I actually just put this one in my everyday makeup drawer. This one is the Lucky Penny palette. It comes with a bunch of gorgeous, like warm orangey coppers. I feel like it's a really fun option if you do love Love, like an intense warm toned eyeshadow look. So I'm going to keep this one too. This one is the Wild Child palette. I don't know that I've ever really 
gotten into this one. It is a really gorgeous palette. I mean, I've used a few of the shadows. It's definitely a deeper neutral palette. So if I want more of like an intense smoky look, I might reach for this one. I'm going to pass this product along to my sister. She has a much darker skin tone than me. Our dad is Filipino and she looks identical to my dad and I look more like my mom, but our skin tones are just so, so different. So I feel like these tones would look amazing on her. Okay, this one is the AHA Honey Palette. So I feel like this comes with some pretty neutrals, but also some yellow tones. Again, I don't wanna get rid of all of my colorful eyeshadows because if I want to wear something colorful and I've decluttered all of my palettes, I don't know what I'll reach for. So I think I probably will keep some of these more monochromatic options. And then maybe, I don't know, I'm just like glancing at my palettes. I don't have a ton of colorful options in here, but I think these are probably the more colorful ones I will hang on to. I might reevaluate in the end if I keep too, too many, but this is the Blue Moon palette. This was one of my favorite ColourPop launches. I just think it's so pretty. And I went through a phase, I don't know, probably back in like 2016, 2017, where I loved blue eyeshadows so much. And I feel like this was the perfect option. It's my pleasure. Again, one of my favorites of all time. I know I keep saying that, but if you've been around my channel for a while, you probably get where I'm coming from. This is beautiful. It has the most gorgeous pinks and purples in it. And then Wine Only is a really dark, dramatic, like berry burgundy palette. I love this one during like Valentine's Day. I feel like that is the perfect time to break it out. So I'm going to keep this one too. Don't get nervous. I promise we are decluttering a lot of palettes today. This is the Baroque palette. I think the packaging is so much fun. This is a really pretty palette. I love the cooler tone blues and like the steely gray tones. There's like a navy. It's gorgeous, but it's just not something I reach for very often. So I'm going to declutter this one. Again, I feel like my sister would like this. This one is the Grandeur palette. I feel like it came out, yeah, it was part of the same collection. And this one is more of a neutral toned palette. Again, my sister just like pops into mind. I feel like this would look great on her. So I'm going to send these to her. This is the All Amethyst palette. This one comes with some purple tones. They just launched like a lavender palette not too long ago. And I feel like maybe they're kind of similar. This one might have like a couple of deeper or more vibrant shades in it, but I haven't reached for this one in a little while. So it is time to part with this. I'm also going to declutter Apricot Me Not. I've worn this one on and off. It's like a lighter, softer neutral palette. And I already know that I have other neutral palettes I'll be keeping. I already kept a few. So I'm going to pass this one along too, but I am definitely keeping this one. This is one of my favorite ColourPop collabs they've done. I think it's so unique. Like sometimes when they collaborate with Disney, the palettes kind of play it safe and they're kind of like toned down neutrals with a few pops of color. Not this one. This one is so interesting. The shades in here are just really fun. So I feel like this is going to be the main green palette I keep. And then if I have other green palettes, I'll probably declutter them. Actually, I could probably just look right now. So that way I remember, I'm not just saying that. Here's the green one. This is the In the Limelight palette. And you know what? I never got as much use out of this as I initially thought I would. So it is time to pass this one along. Actually, I don't know how many green palettes I have. This one is the Melt Cosmetics Smoke Sessions palette. I'm going to declutter this one. It's weird because, you know, Melt, I, I had quite a few, not quite a few, I maybe had like five Melt palettes over the years and I loved them and I held on to a few, but you know, as much as I would love to wear this one, I just don't. And I feel like if I want to wear greens, I can get something similar out of this one. Not the same. I mean, this has like some minty tones in it too, but I haven't used it in at least, have I used it in the past year? No, I don't think I've used it in the past year. So it is time to part with it. Also, you guys, I think I'm going to part with this gorgeous melt palette as well. I know this was limited edition and so many people wanted to get their hands on it, but again, I just haven't used it. It is really, really beautiful. The colors are super intense and I love this color story. I think it is so unique, but it's just not my makeup style anymore, sadly. Like I want this to be my makeup style, but it's just not. I think this is the last ColourPop palette for now. This one is of quartz. It comes with a bunch of like cooler tone shades, some neutrals, some grays. Again, it's just not something that I personally love these days. So it's time to declutter this one. So these are the ColourPop nine pans I'm keeping. I feel like I kept and decluttered a similar amount. So I'm okay with this for now. Let's take a break from ColourPop for now. I do have a few more ColourPop palettes, but we'll come back to those. So let's start right here in this section. 
Okay, the first palette is, of course, a ColourPop palette. This one is the Clay It Cool. I am going to keep this one. It's very similar. It kind of has like a similar vibe and color story to the Patrick Ta Major Dimension palettes. It comes with a cream shadow, some shimmers, some mattes. It's really pretty. It's definitely a fun color story for summer, so I'm going to hang on to this one. I am going to declutter this Profusion Emeralds palette. Honestly, Profusion does a really good job with their eyeshadows. Oh my gosh, I never tried this one. I feel like this was in my last declutter video and I said I was going to try it and then I didn't. So I obviously need to declutter that one. But I have tried Profusion's eyeshadows. Look at this palette. This one looks so rough. This is the Classics palette. I actually wore this one quite a bit and I do think their formula is good. It's very lightweight. It's pretty natural. So if you don't want anything too intense, you might like Profusion shadows. I haven't tried a new Profusion palette in a long time. And I do think maybe they came out with some new formulas or kind of revamped their design, but I'm going to declutter this one too. I just have other neutral palettes I prefer. Ooh, the Anastasia Beverly Hills Jackie Ina palette. One of my favorites. Actually, I think this is my favorite Anastasia Beverly Hills palette because I don't think I even have any of the other ones. This one or the Sultry, but probably this one. I think they did such a good job with this. Jackie created the most beautiful color story and the formula of this one was just so much better than the other palettes. I think it is time to part with this one. I've had it for a really long time. I don't know that it is bad. Eyeshadow palettes do tend to last a little bit longer than other makeup products, but I just haven't used it and I, you know, now that I'm looking at it, I miss it, but I, I can't imagine all of a sudden I'm going to be reaching for this one a ton. So I loved it. It had an amazing place in my collection, but it's just no, some, it's not something I really use anymore. I am going to declutter the e.l.f. Electric Mood palette. I'm keeping some like smaller colorful palettes. Like I'm looking over here right now. I have the blue one, the purple one, the yellow one. So I feel like I just don't need this many colorful shades as well. I think e.l.f. did a really good job for a while. They did this one and then they had like that retro love palette that I loved so, so much. They don't really do these larger palettes as much anymore. But anyway, I'm going to pass this one along. It's not something I've used in a while. I do have this LA Girl quad. This is their Keep It Playful palette. Or it's not a quad. It's a nine pan palette. I am going to keep this one. I think LA Girl shadows are really good. I especially love the shimmers in here. Okay, so I have my Huda Beauty palettes. I do have four of these. Rose Quartz is probably my least favorite, but I did put it in my everyday makeup drawer for spring and I actually ended up using it quite a bit. I feel like I just have to be a little bit more intentional about this one. Like if I'm creating a lighter, softer pastel look or I want something more cool toned and I reach for this, I always love how it turns out. It's just not the palette that I typically reach for first. So I am keeping this. I'm going to keep all of my Huda Beauty palettes because they are some of my favorites. The Mercury Retrograde palette was my first one. I still love this one. One. I know it's been discontinued, but I still reach for mine all the time. I just think it is such a pretty unique color story. You get colorful shades, you get a few neutrals. Every time I use it, I love how my makeup look turns out. I have the Naughty Nude one. I think this is probably my second favorite after the last one I'll talk about in a second. This one comes with a bunch of just like beautiful, almost like chocolatey berry neutrals. I feel like every time I wear this, I get questions as to what palette I'm wearing because it just looks so good on the eyes and I feel like you can do so much with it. And then I do think this one is my favorite. This is the Empowered palette. It's really interesting because you do get softer shades so you can do something really natural or you can do something really intense and interesting with a lot of these shimmers and metallics. So I am going to hang on to all of these. I'm also going to keep, I guess I'm going to keep all of my Natasha Denona palettes as well. I do love Natasha Denona's formula. I have decluttered some Natasha Denona palettes in the past. I decluttered Zendo and then I also decluttered Sunrise. But I think these five are really good and I definitely don't want to declutter them because I love using them. This one is Glam. This one comes with neutrals and cooler tone shades. Really pretty. I don't tend to wear cool tones as much as warm tones or just like neutral undertoned shadows, but on days where I do want like a good cool toned smoky eye, this is perfect. This one is the Love Palette, which I still enjoy so, so much. It comes with a lot of pinks and purples. This one is definitely more vibrant than the Retro Palette. I prefer the Retro Palette to the Love Palette, but I also think they're fun to use together. This is my second favorite Natasha Denona palette. Every time I use it, I love the way my look comes together. It's so beautiful. And I feel like the formula is just good across the board. 
Sometimes with her palettes, I feel like you get some hits and misses within a palette, but that one is really good, like every single shadow in there. This is my favorite palette, the bronze. I think this is like the perfect summer heading into fall and then also holiday palette as well. Every time I use it, I love the way it comes together. I will say a lot of the looks end up looking pretty similar. Like there's not a ton of versatility within this palette, but I still love it. And then last holiday season, I picked up the Retro Glam. I know this one got such mixed feedback, like when they launched the color story, but I still love it. I just think it is beautiful. And I ended up using it during the spring more than I thought I would because those greens and those pinks, they just look really pretty on the eyes. Actually, back here, I do have the Abiba palette. This is probably my third favorite. So Retro, or no, so Bronze, then Retro, then Biba. I've used this one quite a bit. Why does it look like that. It looks kind of rough. I feel like I, maybe I traveled with this one a few months ago. I don't know, but I'm really a big fan of this one just to create like easy everyday neutral looks. But why does it look like that? Like there's random shimmer shadows. I don't know. Maybe my nieces were playing with this. <laughs> They come over and we play makeup sometimes. I have like a designated basket of makeup that I always save for them. Just like really fun, colorful makeup, but they get curious and sometimes they make it into the rest of my collection as well. But usually they love like their pink looks. Anyway, let's keep going. I have a bunch of palettes right here in the middle, just kind of like a lot of random palettes. This is from, or this was an e.l.f. Jen Atkin collab. I actually really liked this collaboration. It was pretty neutral, maybe a little bit boring to some people, but I think the quality of the products was really, really good. So this is like a face and eye palette. I am going to declutter this one. A lot of the shades up here kind of look like the shadows in the e.l.f. Bite Size palette, the Love You A Latte one, which is like my favorite mini quad ever. So I feel like I could pass this product along. This is actually another face palette from Milani. This one is the all-inclusive eye, cheek, and face palette. They do have a couple of these. This one is the lighter one. I haven't reached for it in a while. I feel like the quality is really good. It's just not something I use very often. So I'm going to declutter this one. The Persona Identity Palette is just like a good neutral palette. If a lot of palettes you try lean too warm toned or too cool toned, I think this one is a perfect option. You get lighter shades, deeper shades. Everything about this performs so well. It's such an underrated palette because, you know, it's not like the most trendy palette ever, but I think that's why I like it because it is such a classic staple. This is the Tartlet in Bloom palette. I think I got this in the mail as PR last year and I decided to try it again. I haven't worn it a ton, to be honest with you. I kind of just used it a couple of times and I will say the formula is better than I remember because the Tartlet palettes had never really been my favorite, but it's just not something I reach for super often. So because of that, I am going to pass this one along. Flower Beauty's Desert Lights is one of my absolute favorites. You guys, I broke the Jungle Lights palette. It fell out of my hand and it is no longer here. So I have the Desert Lights palette still one of the best. The shadows just look so good in the eyes. They're like liquid metal. They're so stunning. So I'm going to keep this one. The Milani Gilded Flora palette actually really surprised me. I think this is better than I thought it was going to be. The shadows are very thin, very powdery, but they do blend out well and the shimmers are really pretty too. Again, I just, I haven't used it a lot lately, so I'm going to declutter this one because I did keep some other like pinky purple palettes from ColourPop. Mercury Retrograde has some similar colors, so it's good, but I'm, I'm really trying not to be too, too repetitive. The Disney Villains Misunderstood palette from ColourPop was one of the best. I remember talking about this so much on my channel because I especially loved like this bottom row of deeper smoky shadows. This is pretty old. I mean, I haven't used it unfortunately in like the past year, maybe two. I can't remember the last time I used it. So I think it is time to part with it, but it was such like a staple part of my collection. I just remember mentioning this in so many videos over the years. The ColourPop Troublemaker palette. I don't even remember what this looks like, to be honest with you, off the top of my head. Okay, I, I kind of briefly remember talking about this on YouTube and I don't know. I just feel like the color story is not my personal favorite. It just, it doesn't jump out at me enough to use it over and over. So I feel like I only use it a couple of times. It's time to pass that one along. This one is in the springs. I actually think this color story is really fun for summer. You get blues and oranges. I am going to keep this one. I think the quality is really good. I have more ColourPop palettes than I thought I did. This one is the Whatever palette. It comes with some really pretty burgundies, golds, bronzy shades. It's so pretty. I'm tempted to keep this one because I know that I do like it, but 
I'm, I'm keeping a lot. So again, I'm trying to cut down. I feel like the colors are kind of similar to bronze. So I'm going to pass this one along, but I'm definitely keeping this one. It is the At Forest Sight by Raw Beauty Christie. Definitely one of the best ColourPop palettes they ever did. The shadows, the quality again is so good. Like these shadows are very, very deep and vibrant, but they're very easy to work with because they blend out so nicely. So definitely going to hang on to this one. And then I have the All That palette. Again, another one of my favorites. I know I feel like I've said that about so, so many of these palettes, but I truly did use my palettes like a ton because I would wear eyeshadow every single day. It was the best for my routine. And most days I would reach for like three or four palettes. But I think it is time to part with this one. Again, if I want like those softer pink shades, I have other palettes I'll typically reach for. I'm kind of, I feel a little bit sad getting rid of some of these. I honestly didn't think I would feel like that because I'm not typically like very attached to my makeup. It's, I don't usually feel that way about things like I'm really good at decluttering my entire house, but I feel like I'm just thinking about like all of the memories on YouTube throughout the years and I feel kind of sad. This palette is from Beauty Pie. It is the Push Your Lux palette. It's really nice. The quality is great. I don't know if this is still available. It was like a holiday palette and I... I think I have some Beauty Pie quads somewhere, which I do tend to use a little bit more than this one. The quality is perfect. I definitely recommend their eyeshadows, but again, I just have to be a little bit more selective, and I feel like these colors would really appeal to my mom, so I'm going to pass this one along to her. I do have two different Patrick Ta palettes. These are the Major Dimension palettes. I am going to keep both of these. This is the first one. Mine looks kind of rough. Like, usually my palettes are very neat, very clean, but if it's something I'm using, like, a ton over and over, especially these days, it might look a little bit more messy. I feel like that's a good indication it is a favorite. So I've been using this one lately just because you can get some neutral looks out of it, but I like that it's not like full on orangey. A lot of my warm toned palettes are a little bit too warm toned. So I do enjoy this one because it's not over the top. And then this one is the Major Dimension 2. Again, something that I reach for quite a bit. I think the color story is so perfect. I want to do a video like after I film this on if I could only keep 10 palettes and share like my top 10 favorites. But if I did film that, I feel like both of these would make it into that video. So I am going to keep those. This is the Too Faced Better Than Chocolate palette. I feel like the matte shadows are really good. Like they remind me of the old school chocolate bar palettes and there are some really beautiful shimmers in here, but then some of the shimmers are kind of underwhelming. I feel like the colorful shades in here are the underwhelming shades that don't perform as well, but the actual neutrals are really good. That being said, I, I think I'll pass this product along. I feel like my other sister, not the one who's really tan, <laughs> would like this one because she does tend to wear neutrals and I I haven't used it a ton. I used it enough to review it on my channel, but I didn't really go back to using it regularly. So I am going to give this one to her. I do still have quite a few Urban Decay Naked palettes at this point, and I, I wonder how many more they're going to come out with. I will say I'm not opposed to new Naked palettes because I do think they do a good job with them. Like, they incorporate neutrals and colorful shades in a way that's very easy to wear them and very easy to combine, and their formula is just like a good everyday formula. It's not too intense, it's not too subtle, and you can do something lighter and softer or something more dramatic. But I do think it is time to part with some of these because I don't wear them regularly. Okay, I will declutter Urban Decay's Naked Heat. It's just, it's not something I've used in a little while. I have other warm tones that I tend to prefer over this one. I don't know, part of me feels like maybe I'm hanging on to them for the nostalgia factor. Like, I do like them, but I just feel like, again, when I want these tones, I might reach for another palette. So again, I think I will declutter Naked Cherry. I it's been a really long time since I've worn this one because I do have a lot of like pinky berry toned palettes in my collection that I tend to reach for over this. So I'm going to declutter this one. Naked Honey, ooh, I don't know about this one. This is one of my favorites. I feel like I'll keep Naked Honey just because there are some beautiful, just like easy neutrals in here. And every fall and every holiday season, I do break this out and use it at least a few times. So I'm going to keep this one. Naked Ultraviolet, I think, is probably like one of their their more unique ones. I know this one wasn't for everyone, but I do think it is fun. But am I going to wear it? I feel like I'm not, you guys. Like these sit pretty like up front in my makeup collection, and I just don't reach for them a ton. So again, I don't know why. I feel kind of sad decluttering these. I didn't think I was going to feel like that. I think I will keep 
Naked Wild West because again, I do use this one from time to time. There are some pretty shades in here. It's kind of fun to combine like the warm tones and the cool tones. I'm not ready to part with this one yet. And then when did I get this one? Was it last year or like the very end of the year before that? I can't remember. This is Naked 3, which is an old palette, but I remember telling you guys I really wanted to try this one again. And then they had, I think, a promotion where this was like half off. So I'm pretty sure I grabbed it then. And I am going to hang on to this one. This is the Heather Austin palette that she created with Adept. It is so stunning. Like this is probably one of the prettiest palettes I own. I think the shimmers are gorgeous in here. The matte shadows are great. Whenever I do want to do something a little bit more unique or colorful, I reach for this one. So I'm going to keep it. I have a few more Natasha Denona palettes. These are all the mini palettes. So I do have mini bronze which I love. I think that this one comes with just some like staple everyday mattes and then one shimmer, but it's nice to use alongside of the full size bronze palette as well. This one is mini sunset. I don't remember when I got this one, but I'm pretty sure this is the newest one to my collection. And I feel like this is like a perfect palette for the summertime. This one is mini Biba. You know what? I think I could declutter this one. I don't wear this one as much. And when I wear it, I feel like it always pulls like a little bit more pink toned than I want it to. This shade, this shade, and then even this shade. I like this one and I like this one. So I'm like tempted to keep it for that reason, but I'll... I'll just, I'll pass this along to someone else who will hopefully enjoy all of the shades. And then this one is mini nude, which I do love. I feel like this just creates like some beautiful, easy, everyday neutral looks. I do have these two random Natasha Denona palettes. So BoxyCharm, was it BoxyCharm? Yeah, I think it was BoxyCharm was doing like a lot of BoxyCharm exclusive palettes for a little while. So I had like three or four of them and I kind of like mix and match the shadows. So these are just random shadows from random BoxyCharm exclusives, but I'm going to keep them. I just feel like they're really nice to have on hand. This was like my favorite palette for a long time. Just a bunch of random shades. I use this shade a lot and this shade a lot and then this one a lot, but I don't want to get rid of them because I do feel like I reach for them randomly. More ColourPop palettes. I don't think this is it either. I think I have some more to mention as well. This one is called Coast is Clear and this one is called Clearly in Love. I think they're nice. I mean, the shadows themselves perform well, but again, I just have too, too many. I have to cut back somewhere. So I'm going to pass these two along. Okay. Why do I have two of these? I... I don't know. Did I repurchase it? Did I accidentally buy the wrong one? Whatever the reason, this one looks like it has been untouched. So I'm going to pass this one along, actually donate it. I always donate new makeup and then pass the used products along to friends and family. But I love this palette. I actually love all of these palettes. These are from JCat Beauty and they have so many beautiful color stories. I know they have other palettes at this point, but these are so underrated. There was like an entire year on my channel where I would not stop talking about these. I have this green and blue one. I also have this pinky purple one. And then I have this one. This is the first one I tried. They're beautiful. Like the shimmers in here are some of the best shimmers I've ever tried. And I'm pretty sure, I mean, they're under $10. I'm pretty sure they're more like six or seven. They're so good. So I'm going to keep all four of these. And I feel like this is a good way to keep colorful shadows without keeping a ton of colorful palettes. Speaking of color, I think I am going to declutter the LA Girl Main Stage palette. It's so pretty. Like part of me is like, do you really want to declutter that? I don't want to, but I also don't know the last time I used it. And I definitely have between like the ColourPop palettes, the JCap palettes, I have enough colorful shades that I could probably duplicate a lot of these colors. So, oh, I'm sad. I'm going to pass this one along. I also have this LA Girl palette. This one is the Sun Kissed Glow. Really pretty. I actually think the quality of this palette is so nice. I ranked my palettes last year and I ranked this one pretty high. But again, I think I actually am going, oh, I don't want to declutter it. I like it, but it's just so big. You know what? I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it. I feel like a little bit torn on this one and I don't want to declutter just for the sake of decluttering. I think the actual quality is great. And now that I'm cutting back a little bit, it will probably be even easier to kind of rotate that back in. My, my Tiny Marvels palette from Mel Thompson. This is, the, I love this palette so much. Not only is it just a good palette, like the quality and the color story, it just reminds me of Mel every time I see it, every time I use it. Mel was just the best. I'm pretty sure this palette is still available. And I believe the proceeds from the palette, like part of them go to benefit Mel's family. If that's still the case, I'll link it in the description box below. 
But I just, I love seeing this in my collection because I always, I always think of Mel. I have a lipstick that she created too, and it's the same case when I use that one. So I'm definitely keeping this one. Okay, the Tati Beauty Palette. I, I've kept this one through my last few declutters, but I haven't used it. It is a really gorgeous palette. The quality is so nice, but I just kind of have like staple neutrals that I tend to reach for over this one. So as much as I like this, I mean, and I would keep it just for the fact that it is a good palette. I also haven't used it in the past year, which is usually an indication that it is time for me to let it go. This one is from Siate London. It is the Spice palette. I just got this in a boxing charm back in the fall. It's really beautiful, especially the shimmer shadows. They're so just smooth on the eyes. And then you get a couple of staple neutrals. So I am going to keep this one. And then I also got this one in a boxy charm too. It's the Tarte Sunrise palette. Again, I use this one quite a bit because I feel like you get more of a subdued neutral look. And this was in the back of my drawer and I love this palette. So I feel like I need to move it to the front or move it to my everyday makeup drawer because it is something I really enjoy using. This one is from Jason Wu. It is the Flora Desert Rose palette. It's not necessarily like the most amazing formula out there, but I feel like it's very easy to work with. And I just like the shades for everyday wear. Like I usually use one of the four corners in the crease and then one of these on the lid and then these two as a brow bone. And it's just like an easy palette to work with. This is the Tarte Man Eater palette. This is actually in my everyday makeup drawer right now. So I'm definitely going to keep this one. I was so shocked by this one, especially because like I said earlier, the Tarte lip palettes were never my favorites, but I do think that the quality of this palette is a lot better. And I just think they did a really good job with this one. So definitely keeping this one. This this is the Prague palette. This is from the brand Folklore. I love this one. Again, the quality is just really nice. Kind of an underrated product and brand as a whole, so I'm definitely going to keep this one. The Malibu Barbie palette from ColourPop is so cute. I think the colors are so much fun for summer. Oh, I'm so tempted to keep this one because I feel like it just has like a good memory attached to it. I don't know. Again, maybe I am nostalgic about makeup products. I never used to be, but I think I'm going to declutter this because I did keep a few other colorful palettes from ColourPop. This one's from Hard Candy. This is a really good palette. It's called Blushful Nudes, and I think the shadows in here are pretty. It's a little bit more subtle, but I feel like it's nice to have a variety of formulas. I used to only love like really intense shadows like Melt Cosmetics or Natasha Denona, but there are days where I do want something a little bit softer. So I'm going to keep this one. This one is from Catrice. It is the Sandy Days. I don't know if I ever talked about this on my channel. I was testing out two palettes from Catrice last year, and then I don't know what happened. Did, were they in my ranking? Maybe they were, but I, it, this is a good palette. I just feel like the shades don't flow together. Like there are cooler tones in here and warmer tones and I can't really get a complete look. And that's not always a deal breaker for me because I will reach into multiple palettes, but every time I use it, I feel like my look is just kind of off. Like the colors don't go well together. So for that reason, I am going to declutter it, but the quality is really good. The ColourPop Lust for Dusk palette is super pretty. I just, I haven't reached for it. And I feel like I always tell myself, like my rule in the back of my mind is like, if you haven't used it in the past year, it's time to declutter it. So I do think it is sadly time to part with this one. This one is from M Cosmetics. It is the Divine Skies eyeshadow palette. It's really pretty. Definitely keeping this one. I feel like it's colorful without being you know, too colorful for me personally. Like these are colorful shades I would definitely wear and it's just like the perfect summer palette. So I'm definitely going to hang on to this one. I just have these three bigger ColourPop palettes. So this one is Rock Candy, which comes with a bunch of beautiful shades. Like you definitely get cooler tones in here, some great neutrals. Uh, let, let me look at the other ones. This one is Getting Fresh, which is mainly neutral with like a few pops of pink and green. This one came out last summer. And then this one is my favorite. This one is It's a Mood. Okay, wait, I do have a good amount of colorful shadows just because of this palette. So I have greens and blues and purples and that makes me happy because if I do want to create a colorful look, I can probably just reach into this one and be completely satisfied. So definitely keeping this one, I love it. I feel like Getting Fresh is a really good palette for summer. Again, just like easy neutrals, a few pops of green. So I'll keep that one too. And then Rock Candy, I think I'll keep this one too, just because it does have some of those cooler tones in it. And I didn't keep a ton of cool toned palettes. I have a few, but I don't, I don't want to go, 
you know, I want this to be like a cutthroat declutter, but I also don't want to get rid of everything because then I feel like I'll be tempted to buy new products. So that's pretty much it. The only thing I didn't go through are like all of my little drugstore quads because I do have a bunch of those. And I feel like if I do that, we'll be here forever. So I might actually do a separate video on those. If that's something you would want to see, let me know. So let me just reorganize this and see where I'm at. Okay, here's a look at my eyeshadow palette collection before. I started with 106 palettes, and then here's what it looks like afterwards. So I kept 55, and I actually decluttered 51. So I was able to declutter half of my eyeshadow palette collection, which I, I'm kind of shocked about, but it feels good. Like, I don't even know what to do with all of this space. I feel like I could probably just lay them down, but it's... It's crazy to me because I've never had so much room in my palette collection before. I have this giant bin of palettes I'm decluttering and passing along. I'm excited because I have like specific people in mind for a lot of these, so I hope that other people will enjoy them as much as I did. But it feels good just to kind of be decluttering them and just having palettes that I'm excited to use. It's just more practical. I can use every palette in here throughout the year. And then I do have a few colorful options, but also a ton of great neutral palettes as well. So let me know if you would want to see that declutter video where I declutter all of my drugstore quads and like mini palettes, because I can film that too. Normally I would just include it in this video, but I feel like it's already been long enough. So if you want to see that, I'll definitely film it, but I'll put a couple of my other declutter videos on the screen for you and I'll see you very soon with a new one. Bye.